breaks. Look at that, she cried. The field was now completely flooded like a rice paddy. The brown water had risen to within inches of the wooden walkways. We both shook our heads in disbelief. Then I decided to answer her question about the school. I guess if they have a decent soccer team, I'll let them slide about not having indoor classrooms and not having a gym. Yeah, Mum sputtered. Not having a gym or an auditorium? Two more facts apparently overlooked by your father. And what am I supposed to do? Send you to school every day in rain gear? With an umbrella? Mum would never say it, but I bet we were thinking the same thing. What else has Dad overlooked about Tangerine? We drove on in silence, except for the pounding of the rain, from the flooded campus of Lake Windsor Middle School to the flooded streets of Lake Windsor Downs. Wednesday, August 23rd. All four of us were back at the high school middle school campus today. The head coach, Coach Warner, was holding a three-day tryout camp for the football team before the start of the school year. Eric, of course, didn't need to try out, but he was there anyway. Dad had brought Eric to meet Coach Warner earlier in the year. Dad had knelt down and held the ball for Eric to drill 50-yard field goals, one after another. Well, according to Dad, the coach's jaw had dropped lower and lower. Now Dad and I were standing next to the coach, not that either one of them was aware of me. I was watching a huge bird of prey circling overhead like a hawk. But it wasn't a hawk. I knew that. It was an osprey. I know the difference because of a science project I did last year. Could a vision-impaired person tell the difference? The players were doing calisthenics under a troubled-looking sky. As black clouds gathered in the west, Coach Warner explained to Dad, I've never had a good place kicker before, but I sure could have used one last season. We lost four games by a grand total of seven points. Those days are over, Dad assured him. Antoine Thomas was the whole show last year. He was the go-to guy on every play. He ran for over a hundred yards eight times. That's pretty impressive. I even had him running back kicks. But I'm not going to do that this year. He's just gotten too valuable. If Eric can give us five or six points a game, then I can save Antoine for quarterbacking. Oh, Eric can give you that. He averaged nine points a game last year, and he was only a junior. He scored 14 points in one game. That was the game when he kicked the 47-yard field goal. I remembered that game back in Houston. Eric was on the front page of the sports section the next day. I think it was the proudest day of Dad's life. Dad co told Coach Warner the thing about Ohio State, how he regretted that he hadn't been big enough to play football there. Coach Warner nodded sympathetically, like he agreed that this was some kind of tragedy in Dad's life. I don't understand that. Then again... I don't understand why Dad loves football. I've played football, real football, in the junior league. It's boring. You just stand around most of the time waiting for someone to tell you what to do. And in the end, some guy like Eric, who hasn't even worked up a sweat, can come in and grab all the glory. It doesn't work that way in soccer. Eric used to play soccer. He was really good, too. This was back in Huntsville, back when he was 9 and 10 years old. He took all the penalty shots for his team. That's how he learned to kick so hard, drilling those penalty kicks into the back of the goal net. When we moved to Houston, when Eric was 11, he realized that football was a star attraction. He took to kicking a football, soccer style, into a small net that he set up in our backyard. Day after day, in rain and heat and cold, Eric worked on perfecting a two-step kick. Up until then, Dad wasn't much into sports. Once Eric started getting good, though, Dad became transformed. He started talking about his high school football career and, of course, his regrets about college. He became obsessed with football, especially with place kicking. He learned how to hold the ball for Eric, spinning the laces away. For a while, he tried to get me to hike the ball to them, but I never really cooperated and they soon dropped me from the routine. We watched the Lake Windsor players break into groups for timed sprints. Mom came up and stood with us for a minute. I knew that she was really there to tell me to get into the car because a thunderstorm was coming. She said, A storm's coming, to Coach Warner, but he just smiled and agreed with her. Sure is. Mum pointed out some people to me. There was Mike Costello, and there were his father and his brother standing on the si other sideline. There was Arthur Bauer, the guy Eric had over to the house yesterday. There was Antoine Thomas, Antoine Thomas the quarterback. 
Mum quickly grew impatient to get me back to the car. On the way to the parking lot, she said, Those boys shouldn't be out there in a thunderstorm. They have to play in all kinds of weather, Mum. Sometimes you get caught in a blizzard. Sometimes you get caught in the rain. It's a part of football. It's a part of soccer, too. Why can't they practice in the morning when it doesn't rain? This is ridiculous. When you know that it's definitely going to rain at exactly the same time every day, you can't really call it getting caught in the rain, can you? I had to agree. I guess you're right. It's like the afternoon tree watering time around here. But there aren't any trees anymore. We climbed inside the car just as the first big drops of rain wrapped against the roof. Look at your father! What is he doing out there? I don't know. He's just going to stand there and get soaked? Looks like it. This isn't Texas. They had their own weather in Florida, and we all need to change our attitudes about it. People shouldn't stand outside in this kind of rain. Just listen to that. The rain was beating down so loud now that it was hard to hear Mum's voice. I sat there thinking for a minute, then hollered, I bet the people who used to live here, the people who grew the tangerines, were really happy with this kind of weather. That's why they were here, right? To grow tangerines. Do you mean it's nice weather here if you're a duck? Yeah, or a tangerine. But now it's all upside down, you know. It's all messed up. The rain clouds show up every day, just like they're supposed to, but there aren't any tangerine trees. They can't find them, and they get mad, so they start thundering and lightning and dumping the rain on us. I had the feeling Mum knew what I was talking about, but all she would say is, Clouds don't get mad, Paul. <laughs> we sat in the beating rain noise for a few minutes, then it abruptly stopped like some annoying ki little kid stopping banging on a pan. The sun came out, and the steaming heat rose up all around us. Great, Mum muttered. Now it's sauna time. You need to lighten up, Mum. Oh, is that right? You're the one getting attacked by disappointed rain clouds. Why don't you lighten up? <laughs> Mum looked in the rearview mirror and added, Look, soccer players. I turned around, and sure enough, behind the field of portables was a small group headed toward the middle school soccer field. That's Mike Costello's brother in front. His name's Joey. Go ahead, Paul. Catch up to them. Teach them a few things. Yeah, maybe I will. I hopped out and followed the group. There were four guys ahead of me kicking a ball around. I walked up and stood right in the goal. Joey Costello said something like, Hey, how's it going? And then kicked one at me. Then the other three kids fanned out in a semicircle in front of the goal. I caught Joey's kick and rolled the ball out to the next guy so he could take a shot. I caught his kick, rolled it to the next guy, and so on. They weren't very good. Not, not one of them seemed to know how to kick. They didn't drive the ball with their insteps, they just stubbed it with their toes. I had no trouble stopping everything they sent at me. I never did hear the names of the other guys, but when they got tired of playing, we walked back together toward the football field parking lot. Joey said, are you coming out for the Lake Windsor team? Oh yeah, I'll be there. You gonna play goalie? Yeah, how about you? Pull back, I guess. I played some goalie last year, but I never got into a game. When are tryouts? I don't know. Joey turned to the other guys. When are tryouts? Anybody here? Heard? They, everybody shook their heads or said no. Joey said, listen to the morning announcements. They'll tell you when. All right, I said. I'll catch you guys later. The four of them continued toward the other side of the field, still stubbing the ball along the ground ahead of them. I saw that Mum and Dad were waiting at the car, so I hustled over there. I said, where's Eric? He's getting a ride home with Arthur Bauer, Dad answered. How did your soccer playing go? Mum asked. No sweat, I said. As we rode back, I thought about how easy it was and how easy it was going to be. If Joey was the best they could do for a goaltender, then I already had the job. I wondered if he had changed his mind about playing goal again after watching me today. I wouldn't doubt it. I wondered if he saw that a major leaguer was here to play a season or two in the minors.